Hello all YouTubers, I am the Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this Invest 90L discussion for August 31st, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from the Weather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest the Weather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. It's hard to believe how many invests, different invests we've been tracking this year. And yes, I believe this is on our third cycle because... Usually in the season, we start up with 90, we go up to 99, and we start over again. I think this is the third time that we're starting, or the second time we're starting over, because we started over once, which is our second round of invest. Now, I think we're starting back at the beginning yet again with 90L. So we had a lot of invest this year. So this is 90L. My last video, I tracked 99L. So if you haven't watched that, please consider watching that after this video. And let's get right into it. So invest 90L is sitting off the coast of the southeastern United States. So it's developing right close to the United States. And this one developed out of the blue. And right out of the gate had a medium chance of development. Now it's up to a high chance, very high. As a matter of fact, 90% chance of development within the next two days and within the next five days. So this probably has a good chance to develop within the next day or two. So this is an area of low pressure located 135 miles southeast of Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, this is becoming better organized. And we could even have a depression later today or tonight as this moves northeastward. Okay. And we'll be offshore of the southeast and mid-Atlantic coastline. So it could stir up some rough surf, maybe for the southeast coast, maybe for the mid-Atlantic coast. Probably not for the northeast and New England. I think you guys are too far out of, the, uh, out of reach. But mid-Atlantic and southeast coastlines, you could see some rougher, rougher surf conditions potentially. Um, we could even see the Air Force, um, the, the Air Force, the Hurricane Hunters flying into the storm. Um, it's actually en route now. All right, so hopefully um, we'll be actually checking out, um, depending on like maybe late. I think we'll check out later on the video because... Um, they'll probably have some more data coming in. Hopefully, they have some data from the Hurricane Hunters. But Invest 90L currently has, all right, uh, maximum sustained winds, 30 miles an hour, wind gusts to 40 miles an hour, just like Invest 99L. So, sustained wind speed, same wind gust. Pressure is a tad bit higher, though, at 1009, 1009 millibars. Radius of circulation, 65 nautical miles, and radius of maximum wind is 60 nautical miles. So, here's what it looks like on satellite. As you can see, it's developing a low center. All right, it's not too organized, but it's becoming very be a little bit or a little better organized. And you can see here's your convection around it. All right, it's got some medium convection. It's got some little flare spots of convection here, and this is moving um, pretty much near the Gulf Stream, right on the Gulf Stream. So that's what's help that's what's really helping this storm develop is the Gulf Stream that that warms that splendid warm source of water um, that's really helping this storm get together. And it's, it's trying to develop a close circulation. It's having a little bit of a tougher time, but it's definitely getting there. So current low position. 70 it's about 77 and a half degrees west and 30 i'd say uh 31 and a half degrees north so those are your coordinates for the low right now and looking at the model track guidance um one model brings it right up onto the sh just off the shore of delaware and new jersey towards long island uh, obviously that probably will not happen probably because of the steering mechanisms and all the shear that we're having it'll probably get steered more towards the north and east uh, well off the coast of New England, United States, well off the coast of Halifax and Newfoundland, and just out to sea. So other than maybe giving the mid-Atlantic and southeast coast some rougher surf, this really won't be impacting anybody directly um, in the near future here, and even in the long future, because this will be moving this will be moving away from the United States uh, pretty quickly here. But here's a GEFS model, and you can see these models, these ensemble models, I don't, I don't really like looking at for strength. I like looking at them more so for the track. The strength, I'll be, I evaluate in a couple of other maps. Um, I kind of look at that in a couple of other maps, though. So, look, at they kind of had making a more easterly turn, making a, a, a bend to the right, so making like a complete easterly motion, potentially. Right? And looking at the GE, uh, GFS, GEFS parallel model tracks, they kind of say the same thing, kind of like a similar motion here, kind of like the regular GE, GEFS. But that's like the parallel version of the models. And then it's the, the model intensity guidance. Notice how a lot of the models, like 99L, a decent amount of them have it, have it becoming a tropical storm. But most of them just keep it as either an invest or just a tropical depression. Not even gaining tropical storm status. Only a couple models do that. 
So this may not even become a tropical storm, maybe like a subtropical depression or subtropical storm if it's lucky. But the sea surface temperature anomalies are definitely warmer than average for the entirety of the storm's path, pretty much. The entirety of the storm's life lifespan. There's going to be some above average waters. As for where it's sitting right now, pretty much near 20, anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good. All right, a good uh, chocolate development here. And then moving on to the north and east, still maintains some 80 degree waters up until it leaves about maybe 35, 36 degrees north uh, longitude or latitude, makes its way far north than that. And then it's going to kind of start the weekend because it doesn't have as much warmer water to support it and definitely running into a lot of shear as well. So maybe this could become, become a subtropical cyclone. So looking at the GEF or GFS model, all right, you can see there is a storm developing, not really too much of a low center. But there is definitely some development off to the eastern side of it, which is why I think this could become subtropical. Um, and it kind of quickly pulls off to sea. That wind shear is going to be kicking, all right, from west to east. So that wind shear is going to quickly push that convection well off to the right. Even though the low, cent the low center won't be able to keep up with it. Like, we may run into, into a scenario where the low center is here, but all the convection is over this way. Because the shear can't really push the low center, right? It can't really, it can't really make the low center move in a certain direction. What the shear does is it takes all the convection associated with the low and kind of throws it off in a certain direction. This, the 500 millibar steering, as I like to say, the 500 millibar steering is what really, that's what really helps move the low center itself. But the wind shear kind of pushes the, the convection in a different direction and kind of helps to tear the storm apart. So here's a cyclone of autistic signature with the GFS model. As you can see, some reds, some lavenders, it's, it's having a good time developing, okay? Getting, actually getting pretty close to Hatteras. I don't know about a Hatteras landfall, but it, but the GFS has it getting pretty close to Hatteras and Cape Hatteras here. And then kind of making a, a book to the east, kind of making a very quick uh, pass near North Carolina, making its way to the east. Maybe something else develops behind that. That could be another piece of the storm trying to develop behind it. All right, and then it's off, and then it's off the sea. And then we have sort of a high pressure maybe trying to, to develop here, um, kind of pushing that thing well out to the right, well off to sea, and out of existence. So... Looking at the gem model, however, they kind of have more of a closed low center, uh, very weak though, 1014 millibars of pressure, which is very weak, actually weaker than it is now, which is pretty odd. Hopefully we'll get some more updates here as well. I don't know what that is. Um, so here we go, moving out to the east here, and then maybe 1012 millibars of pressure, but they don't really have it developing too much. All right, so that obviously would be too good uh, for, for development, because if it moves too far north, and it's going to start to run into even more shear. All right, it will be running into some shear already, but this isn't making things uh, much better. So here's the gem model, the Sakana Vorticia signature. All right, got some steady reds and some good development, right? Moves up close to North Carolina. And then you can just see once it moves through that shear area, I mean, the, the Vorticia goes from deep red that just falls apart just to lighter orange. I think that a high pressure could throw some dry air into the storm as well, the high pressure developing to the south. Um, so that's not going to really help the storm at and anyway now look at the european model all right they have it developing okay could become a decent subtropical or even tropical cyclone moving to the north and east and then but they kind of have it not really getting absorbed northward but more so bending towards the east making a complete right hand turn 90 degree right hand turn here all right and then moving on to the east northeast and on out of here so look at the cycle or excuse me the the ship's dynastic message as you can see, over the next day, a couple days, the shear will be going up. Not slowly, but we will be seeing wind shear 30, 40 knots. And the sea surface temperature will going to be watching them. Actually maintaining 29, 28 pretty much over the next few days. So that's good for the storm's development. At least the waters will be above 80 degrees for the majority of its duration. Um, storm speed right now, moving pretty steadily, could slow down a little bit. Maybe going from 14 miles an hour or so, maybe down towards 9 or 10. So maybe slowing down a little bit. Like 99L, it wouldn't be completely stationary, but it will be slowing down a little bit. And heat content, because it's over the Gulf Stream, that's another thing to note as well. Heat content over the next, say, day or so will be very high, and then it'll kind of fall to more manageable levels after the next couple of days. So, say, 20s, 30s. All right, not too bad, but it's not, not, not that much heat content, but it's enough to give the storm some development here. So, look at the tropical cyclone genesis. Um, the NCP, FNOC, the GEM, and the Euro models. I'll give this thing a good 40 to 50 percent chance of development here in, indicated by the orange color um looking at the ncp ensemble based probabilities though they give it a good 30 percent chance maybe even beyond that maybe a 40 to 50 percent chance once it moves on to the north and east so it could develop all the way to the north here 
maybe a more of a subtropical cyclone again trying to develop tropical intensity index values as of right now it could be exiting that red region but for now we do have some highly favorable conditions for development again on the cyclone vorticity thing signature all right there's where we see it developing right now all right dry air all right dry air is it's it's a little high right now actually I, well it will be high i should say once it makes its way to the north for now it's sitting in some very low dry air what i meant to say was it what it is in highly favorable conditions for development um not too big of a cyclone but it's it's a decently sized uh, area of low pressure and it will be get absorbed by wind shear eventually and let's take a look now at the wind shear values all right so take a look at the wind shear here um like i said off the coast of the carolinas you can see it's going to quickly run into some very very high shear according to the shear map here so even right now I think even right now it's even sitting in some you know okay shear environment, but I think there's you're going to see a lot of convective activity pushed way to the right here, um, meaning the storm will be less organized. But we still have to watch for some subtropical development. It can even develop under these high shear environments. And like I said, it's August, so we're seeing a lot more warm water. And I think this could it's going to have some things for it and against it here. But this storm does have a chance to develop. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell notifications so you do not miss another video. And Weather Dude, signing off. Till next time, catch you guys in the next video.